How does this company do and how does it, because we still, you you are in the tech space. That's what you're known for. And we haven't even got to it. We haven't even got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where things get so interesting because I truly believe that the greatest entrepreneurs solve their own problems. Yeah. Like they solve, I, I, I'm having a problem. That must mean that so many other people are experiencing the same exactly. problem. Exactly. How does going from roll up shoes that women can buy when their feet hurt after partying all night, walking on heels all day, segue you into the tech space? Yeah, it brought me back to tech because the, the answer is I was selling the shoes and vending machines. I have five machines out. So in 2013, Okay, stop so, 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 so for one second. You're selling them in vending machines. Are they your vending machines or these yes. other vending machines? My that vending machines. So, yeah, so I was selling them online first. 2011, we launched in April, selling them online. Mm -hmm. Constantly working on the vending machine. So I found, after a lot of hard work, not easy, but I'm going to skip that part, found someone who would believe in me enough to build a machine for me the way that I asked. I did not want a big Dorito machine. I wanted a little, like an ATM-sized machine that could go into a club because a club owner of a nice club like live in Miami where I was at he's not about to have no big clunky Dorito right. looking machine in his club correct right. I knew I had to make them sexy so I did it I found a guy in the UK and he, I flew over to the UK and he built them for me and then I got my shoes made in China and I met these people on Alibaba and I still work with them to this day so it's the early days of Alibaba so I found him to build these machines for me and they worked. They, they, were, they were fine. They were in the club selling shoes all the time. I'm also selling online and my, my e-commerce store is growing really fast. And it's a funny story because Lala Anthony, who I wanted to be like, ended up endorsing my products for me and posting about it and helping me to grow that business. Wow. And so, you know, we're selling in there. We're selling in the, in the clubs and in the airport. We're in Atlanta airport. And I realized as a business owner, that I wasn't getting enough information and data to grow my business. It's called scaling. Grow your business from five machines to 500. How could I do that if I don't have any information? If I don't know, you know, if I can't get a customer email address at the bare minimum, customer email address, if I can't send receipts, if I can't send marketing, if I can't understand how are people using my machines? I want to know how many people walk by. I want to know if they're in a good place. Before I spend all this money building machines, I want to make sure I'm doing this the right way or I'm going to lose a ton of money. And so I spent a couple of years looking for software because that's what that's how you understand your business analytics. It's through software. In the e-commerce world, if you have a website, you use Google Analytics. And they give you all kinds of information about who comes to your site, how long they stay, did they convert, what page do they look at, all these things. But in the brick and mortar physical retail world, there was no data. And I felt that I was stuck in a place where I couldn't grow. So I spent a couple of years literally looking for a software company that would essentially upgrade my machines with their technology. And I could not find anyone. And I knew that I had to do something or my business was not going to grow to where I wanted it to grow to. And so I started another business. And that's when I started Popcom, which is the tech company. And Popcom is a software company. And the foundation of Popcom is software to revolutionize automated retail, software to make dumb vending machines smart, software to help you understand what's going around, what's going on and around your machines, in front of machines, remarket, get customer email addresses, send social media messages, and just send, you know, targeted advertisements, product suggestions, all that we're used to shopping on our phone and online. That's why I got back into software because I wanted to be able to sell more shoes. And then it led to a whole nother thing. Okay. It's so much to digest in that one segment. I know. I so know. I want to peel back the layers just a little bit. I love, and for anybody who's watching this on YouTube, anybody who's listening to this on any of the streaming platforms, pay close attention. You have your shoes, and I just want to pull out this part because I think it's so damn smart. You have these shoes. Most people would think, let me go and try to get my shoes into the traditional brick and mortar stores, existing chains that are out there. 
but you knew your customer base. Mm -hmm. My customer base is me. I'm doing promotion. I'm young. I'm in the clubs. I'm on my feet. I have to get where these women are. So I think it's so interesting because you talked about the vending machines, but you didn't, I want to highlight the why. Like, like the why was I need to be where my consumer where the pain point is. At 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., when, when a young lady is leaving the club and her feet are on fire, yes. that local shoe store ain't open. Not open. But on the way out, she knows that vending machine is there. All I got to do is go put a couple of dollars in or whatever you were charging for it, and she is good. Just had a good night, and she can go on home in these shoes that are readily available. I think that that is so smart. I think that that is identifying and knowing who your consumer is, where they're at, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that you started to think a little further because thinking like that in the beginning is one thing, but now you're saying, you know what? These vending machines are great, but they're dumb. Yeah. How do I smarten them up? How do I start to understand more about who's buying this product? And now you go into the tech business and yeah. start to become a software development company, yes. which is Popcom. Some are good, you know, and it all came from just trying to be disruptive of my distribution. Like you said, I went into the stores. I, I did have 47 stores carrying the product and online, but that's not where they experience the pain point. By the time they, I mean, they go to the store, they're not, they don't need them then. It's for later, which mm -hmm. I wanted to be there right there for you when your feet hurt. And then I wanted to be there for the woman that wants to shop in advance. Like the, the thing about being a good business owner is being everywhere your customer is at. However, they want to get your product, give it to them there. But it takes data to understand that. So when I didn't have any data, I couldn't even determine if vending machines were actually really effective. I just didn't know. And that, that's why I needed to make them smarter. Okay. Before we move on, is the vending machine industry, is it over? Because when I think of vending machines, I'm like most average everyday person. I think... Pepsi Cola, I think M and M's, yep. um, Trail Mix. You are your vending machines are not that. Your vending machines are what we see at the airport. Yes, Best exactly. Buy. Mm -hmm. You know when when you're walking through an airport. Um, is this industry lucrative? Number one, is it? overcrowded because I see these things seems like everywhere. So for you to even take a chance and say, I feel I can disrupt this space. That's bold and ballsy of you to begin with. But I guess that's where the software really helps you to understand. Now you're not just making a gut decision. You're making an informed decision. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And you know, it took me to deeply research to understand the industry and the potential of the industry, because you're right. I grew up here in America and we see soda and snacks and coffee. That's what vending is for. But you go to Asia, which I've spent time in China and Japan, and you'll see vending is a part of life. It's everything you can think of in vending machines, literally live crabs. They grow in hydroponic lettuce. They're selling jewelry. They're, I mean, everything is, is they're used to automated retail. The United States was just behind that curve. So when I realized that, wait a minute, they're selling so many products in other countries and the United States is not doing that because we don't have the technology available to our retailers to do it, I knew I could really disrupt an industry. And when I thought about industry disruption, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew that, you know, even though it's a, I think right as of now, $30 billion industry in the United States, obviously around the world is a lot larger. These are a lot of dumb machines. Is industry ready to be disruptive? Are they going to accept it? And it really came from the, the people creating the demand. So companies like Zoom Systems, which you referenced the Best Buy machines, they paved the way to get people in, in the habit of buying headphones, makeup, non-traditional things. So I thought to myself, they've already laid the path and people are getting more comfortable shopping in vending machines, like actually shopping. Let's take it a step further and make this opportunity available to more retailers. Because the thing about Zoom Systems is this company only works with multi-million dollar businesses. 
I tried to work with them as flat out. I went to them first. You already have vending machines in the airport. Put me on. And what they actually said was it cost $1.5 million to do business with us. The barrier to entry was ridiculous. That means not me, not nobody that looks like me, and not any small business owner is going to pay $1.5 million to be in a vending machine. So it's like I had to increase access to this technology so, so that people who have small businesses and medium-sized businesses could actually take advantage of this distribution channel. It was very closed off because they couldn't get that access. And I knew it was two things I had to do. Create technology that was affordable and then innovate the machines so that newer brands that are high tech, innovative, cool new brands would want to put their brand in this machine. And that's when I really said, okay, I got to reinvent the design. And I invented the pop shop, which is a new kind of vending machine we call a digital pop up shop. It doesn't look anything like a vending machine at all. It's like I remember growing up in my house and my grandma had a rotary phone and now we have this. How did you get from a rotary phone to this? disruption. You know, Steve Jobs and Apple changed the way we deal with phones. We didn't even know we needed a computer in our hand. We didn't know until he told us, and now we cannot live without it. And so my thing is, you don't know you need this machine until I show it to you and tell you how it's going to change your business, increase your sales, drive traffic, help you make more money. And once I painted that story to retailers, even before I launched the, the product, they, they got it. And I got a lot of people, a lot of business owners, retailers sign on and say, if you build this machine, I'll buy it. And I use those LOIs, those letters of intent, non-legally binding, of course, to get investment dollars to, rate, to, to grow this business. I said, listen, the market wants what I'm building. I don't even know how I'm going to build it yet and what it's going to take. But if I build it, I know they will come. And that's literally what happened because it was in that period of time where retailers needed a new distribution channel and they needed to be able to get into uh, spaces that they have been kept out of. And another company that really disrupted the space was Amazon. If you realize it or not, the package lockers are in fact vending machines. Yes, they are. They are vending a product to you that you already paid for. But Amazon broke that open for us too because now people are so comfortable getting a product from a locker. And we also build technology for lockers. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.